time for gym battle number four. You better watch out, Elisa, because you're about to get ravaged by my two foot four drill. So, yeah, as I said before, this gym gives a lot of people trouble because they don't have a ground type. Because the basic strategy here is that she keeps using Vault Switch to switch out of potentially uh, super effective moves, making them normal or not very effective against another target instead. But that's not gonna work if I kill everything before they get a chance to get a shot off at me, don't they, huh? Where's your Vault Switch now, bitch? Now, Zeb Strika, her ace already! So for this one, I'm gonna go with Dig! Which obviously means instant kill. Oh, flame charge. That actually might have stung a bit considering Excadrilla's steel type and all, but I am tearing you apart, Elisa! Now, the second Emolga, the last one. So even if Vault Switch did any damage at all, still it would be impossible to switch. So yeah, at this point it's just a matter of finishing off that Emolga, here we go! Easy! Very, very easy! This is how you take out Elisa with a minimum of fuss instead of going into a one hour marathon that ends up with you losing! But um, anyway, time to get our fourth badge, the Bolt Badge, and I can't get over how awesome this looks even though it's just on a puny vanilla DS. Ching! Here we go, we're halfway there! And uh, yeah, Pokemon that are traded and up to level 50 will now obey me. And if I'm not mistaken, she's also going to give me the Vault Switch TM in case I'm interested in using it. But, of course, I don't have anything on my team that can learn it right now. Because it would be pretty interesting. 70 power and a free switch at this point in the game is pretty freaking powerful. So if I used an electric type or something that could learn Vault Switch, uh, I might be tempted to use it. But yeah, um, as we've said before, uh, we can't get to Drift Veil vale City, so we had to meet up with Elisa so that she could do something about it. So we're supposed to meet with her on Route 5, right after I'm done waiting for this for this ride. Here we go. This is a shortcut back to the entrance. This is a one-way only, of course, because if you try going back there, you're just going to be sent back to the entrance. Anyway, so, uh, uh, yeah, really nothing all that interesting. As I said uh, in the last part, there's something that you can do in the amusement park once you've beaten Elisa. I'm going to grab that item I missed in the last part first. Just gonna send in Lilligant as my lead because, um, well, Excadrill now has a two level advantage over everything else. The item is right over there, and it's an X attack. Bleh. Anyway, now by the roller, co roller coaster, sorry, Ferris wheel, uh, you can see that there's now a preschooler there. This is a, a feature in this game in that you can fight a, a trainer once, e once every day here and which trainer it is depends on the season as well as your gender. So there are eight possible trainers that you can fight. You can only fight four given that you can't beat both genders at a time, of course. So yeah, uh, we're gonna battle and after that we're gonna go into the Ferris wheel. That's the way it goes for all eight trainers. And um, one problem though, the levels don't increase as you get further into the game, as is the case with the, the big stadium and the small court. So after a while, this stops being an interesting place to come to, because level 24 Pokémon just aren't that interesting from a leveling standpoint. And speaking of... Uh, the big stadium. I originally didn't intend on making a video today, but since today is a Tuesday and there's soccer over at the big stadium and it's the last sport we haven't checked out, we're gonna head over to right. We're gonna head over there right after this uh, Ferris wheel ride. Now, the Ferris wheel ride doesn't doesn't bring anything new to the table, even though um, you know it's it's just a oh. Okay, hello, slow down much? 
Uh, I don't know if it's the only the music that's slowing down, or it, or if it's just everything. Must be all the trees. The emulator must be hating all the trees. No, not really. They're not on the screen anymore. But the uh, doesn't really matter either way. All you get is a few uninteresting lines of dialogue. There is one trainer though. Uh, whose lines are rather interesting. No, 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 wait, I'm thinking of the Japanese version. There was one trainer who said something totally inappropriate in the Japanese version. There wasn't even room for doubt about what he meant, and they censored the ever-loving shit out of it. So I won't get to show you what the guy says, but... Um, I'm gonna put it in the movie description. I'm sure I can find what he says, so just for laughs, I'm gonna put it in the movie description. Anyway, we're heading back to uh, the big stadium for one last time, at least for now. Because we got some soccer players to, um, to play against, and his hand got hurt too! And now I can make an inappropriate joke because you barely use your hands at all in soccer, unless, well, unless this guy's like the goalie, but. Oh well, whatever. This guy here is the trainer that you want to fight. As with the other sports right now, there's only one trainer to fight, but there are going to be more that are going to be added as we progress into the game. So, how else can I put it but this? Final score 0-0! Zero, zero, most popular sport in the world! Yeah, I never understood the appeal for soccer. I tried watching it, and it's just so very... Boring! Oh my god! I guess we're sort of spoiled in North America with hockey and football, but still, soccer really isn't my cup of tea, and it wears its name very well because it sucks! And yes, I know that's not what soccer is supposed to mean. Uh, as far as I know, it stands for Association Football. And the great irony in all of this is that the word soccer was originally coined by the British, the same people who hate the word so very much. Then again, I guess I shouldn't pick on the British so much, because uh, the fact is that they also invented the imperial measurement system, yet at some point they realized that it blew monkey chunks and ditched it in favor of the metric system. E even though around the world, it's still uh, usually called the British system. Even the British don't use it anymore. And uh, I don't know if they're in need of more players because of the traffic cones uh, on the field. But uh, then again, I guess this is a pretty good image in that traffic cones are just as exciting to watch as soccer players. And, uh, Pocker? I don't know. Was that a joke that was lost in translation? And for that matter, was this whole part localized differently in Europe, like uh, in the UK and also Australia and such? Because I can't really imagine them using the word soccer and, uh, when, they're, when, they're, when they usually call it football, and then they would call uh, football American football, and you get what I mean, uh, what I'm asking. Anyway! We step out on Route 5, but before we can head over to the Driftvale Drawbridge, Sharon interrupts us, and since we have the same number of badges once again, he wants to know who's the strongest one. I don't think I need to spoil that battle for you, but I'm gonna commentate. I'm gonna commentate it anyway, just for kicks. Now he's now got the fully evolved Lyperd, which is going to act as his lead for the rest of the game. So, oh yeah, fake out, of course. It always starts with fake out always nonetheless that didn't do to him that didn't do it too much good because it fainted and I'm back at full health anyway tranquil I'm going to send Excadrill for this one because it resists both of uh, tranquil's stabs and I can hit back with a super effective rock slide unless it misses that would kind of suck oh quick attack well that didn't do a whole lot of damage, so I guess uh, it was a good idea to send out Excadrill for defensive purposes as well. Here we go, Pig Knight. Excadrill can stay in there even though it's weak to both of Pig Knight's stabs. And 
yeah, I get. I guess it's not really that much of a problem because I'm much faster, and Dig is uh, is super effective against Pig Knight. So down it goes, and the last one should be Pan Sage. Yep. So for that one, I'm going to be sending out Sigilith because it's in need of some uh, screen time. Hasn't been uh, on the screen too much in those last few videos. But that's about to change because it's going to get a free kill on Sharon's final Pokemon. And here we go. It was as easy as that. Not even close. And once again, Sharon doesn't understand that while we do have the same number of badges, we aren't really equal. That doesn't mean we're equal. And Elisa got tired of waiting, I guess, so she came over here. And, um, yeah, let's head over to the Driftvale Drawbridge. Or not, because we're about to get introduced to a new character. Who's apparently acquainted with Elisa. Life should be enjoyed! You know, if he was hitting on her, I think he would use that exact line. Our champion, everybody! Yes, this is Alder, the champion of the Unova region. This is the first time in the main series that a game out and out tells you this is the champion, this is the man to beat, and <laughs> he calls him judgmental right in his face. Yeah, that is very much true. Sharon doesn't like him very much, it seems, but uh, it could be worse. He could be talking to the champion who would send him on all sorts of errands that she could do perfectly herself. But, anyway, Sharon says that uh, his goal is to become the champion, and since we're done with Bianca's story arc, it's time to move on to Sharon. And, uh, yeah, Alder's question totally stumps... Uh, uh, Sharon here because he doesn't have much in the way of long-term planning skills because yes after you become the champion what do you do afterwards so Alder is going to try to explain him uh, his point of view <laughs> I think there's yeah there was there was going to be a battle in there he's going to pit us against a pair of preschoolers now this, now, on the surface, this may just look like it, it. he's just trying to explain something to Sharon, and thanks for the free healing, by the way. But, we all know, we all know what Alder is doing this for. He's only doing this for kicks because he likes to see weak Pokemon suffer. Our champion, everybody! Now, yeah, I'm gonna stop saying that now. But, um, uh, ow, well... I don't care about Intimidate that much, but, uh, but uh, Lyperd might. So, as I was saying, this is the first game where the game tells you before the end of the game, this guy is the champion, this guy is the man to beat, and then it turns out that he is not the man to beat because he's not the final boss of the main story. Sorry, spoilers. Anyway, seems like I'm pretty much on my own for this fight because this Lyperd really isn't doing a whole lot, you know, because we we, di we didn't see it doing a whole lot aside from that fake out which got completely he healed in a single turn anyway. And you can see that the preschoolers are excited, which is written in such a way as to drive Alder's point home even more. There's, according to him, there's more to Pokemon than just becoming the strongest. And I know this is where I would usually give you a lecture about ones and zeros, but since it's the entire theme of the game to begin with, and I promised I wouldn't give you a lecture, I'm, I'm not going to give you one. And by the way, just a random fact about Alder, despite his, his appearance, he's actually old enough to have grandchildren, even though he really doesn't look all that old, to be perfectly honest with you. So moving along, let's head over to the bridge, but not before we see Sharon start to question himself, and not before we end off this video either.